Hey everybody. Today we're talking about simple linear regression in R. This is an introductory conversation suitable to people that might be taking a first statistics class, for instance at the college level, using R. If you are interested in a bit more of a deeper dive, or if you're a bit more statistically experienced, this isn't the video for you. I recently recorded a much deeper dive going into some of the concepts you'll be more interested in. I'll throw a link to that up top. Okay, so a linear regression model, also known as a regression line, is just a line that fits a data set, a scatter plot, as closely as possible. So here you've got two quantitative variables. They've got a more or less linear shape, so you fit a line on top we're going to want to find the equation of that line. Always remember that a linear regression is only going to be appropriate if the data has an approximately linear shape, at least approximately. Um, that should mean that the points on your scatter plot should be kind of randomly strewn out about a straight line. If your scatter plot has a curvy shape, like a parabola or something, then the kind of models we're looking at here aren't going to be good enough. Okay, so over the next couple minutes, I want to answer some basic questions about this data set and these two variables. I want to get the equation of the regression line we were just seeing in that picture. I'd like to make a prediction using that regression line for the temperature on a future day when the observed wind speed is 8 miles per hour. And then I'd like to get a residual for an observation with that wind speed and a temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, these measurements are in miles per hour in Fahrenheit. I'm in the United States. My apologies to my international audience. Okay, so uh, let's swap over to R and get this done. I have already pulled up a help file for the air quality data set. This consists of observations of New York air quality from 1973. For the purposes of this vid, we're going to treat that like a simple random sample and not ask too many questions about that data. Although we recognize we should always be asking real questions about how our data was collected and what its impact might be once we're done analyzing it. So the syntax for getting this linear model in R is actually extremely simple. We're going to use LM for linear model. And then inside of the LM command, we use what's known as model notation. We put the response variable first, so in this case temp, and then a tilde. And on my Mac, that's at the upper left-hand corner of my keyboard and then the explanatory variable, so wind. You can read this as temp is explained by wind. Now, we've specified the variables we're interested in, but right now R doesn't know where to find them. Um, we need to let R know those variables are found in the air quality data set. So data equals air quality. Now when I hit return, I'm gonna get a very simple printout. It's gonna remind me of what my formula was that I just used in the data set. And then it's going to give me two coefficients, the intercept and wind, the slope. So the equation of my regression line is going to be 90.13 minus 1.23 times x. So that's our answer for this very first question that I've asked here. Now let's use this equation to predict the temperature on a day when the observed wind speed is 8 miles an hour. Now this just means plugging into the regression line. Miles per hour is our x variable, our explanatory variable. We can just plug that in for x to get a y value out, to get a predicted temp. So 90.13 minus 1.23 times x, and x in this case was 8. So we get a predicted value of 80.29 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look back at this scatter plot and find 8 miles per hour for wind on the x-axis, if we go up to the regression line, we're going to hit that at the y value that we just determined, a little bit more than 80. In other words, what this is doing is it is taking the x value and giving me back the y value on this line, on this plot. Okay, determine the residual of the observation in this set that has a wind speed of 8 miles per hour and a temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. There actually is such an observation in this set. It's right about here, I think it's this one, I think it's the second observation in the set. We'd like to know how does this differ from what we've predicted, what was our fitted value. So we're going to take our fitted value, our predicted value, and then subtract off, sorry I said that backwards, we're going to take the value that we actually got and then subtract off the value that we predicted. So the value we actually observed was 72. 
the value that we predicted was 80.29, so the difference is negative 8.29. This negative residual indicates that the prediction was too great, the actual value was lower. The actual observed value is 8.29 degrees below what the model predicted. Visually on this graph, that means this point, 8,72, is 8.29 units below the regression line. Okay, so that's the uh, really essential stuff that you need to know to get through basic simple linear regression in an introductory stats class. I want to take just a couple more minutes though and dive into just a tiny bit more depth for those of you that might be a bit more data curious or that might want to take this to the next level. Although, of course, if you're wanting a truly deep dive, go to that link I showed earlier. What I'd like to do is um, to take this linear model that we built here and just go a little deeper into it. So I'm going to save it as an object. I'll just call it model. I won't think too hard about my name. I'm only doing one model here, so I'm not going to get confused. And uh, that'll put something in my environment tab. You can see here um, in my environment, I have model, which is just a list. And that includes just a tremendous amount of information from this linear model. The, um, the thing that I want to show you right now, the first of two things I want to show you, is the summary command. And if you put in summary of model, it's going to, well, <laughs> give you a summary of that model. You still get your um, formula that you used, and you still get your coefficients, an intercept of 90.13, a slope of negative 1.23, but you get a lot more. In particular, I want to point out these p-values, this one in particular. PR parenthesis greater than absolute value of t. So what we are seeing here is a p-value versus the null hypothesis that the slope in the population from which this data was taken is actually zero, and that the slope we got from our sample here is just due to random chance. So if, in fact, wind and temperature were not related at all in a linear fashion, the kind of data that we got, the kind of slope we observed in this sample, would only occur um, with this frequency, 2.64 times 10 to the negative ninth of the time. Now, that's an incredibly small p-value. It's infinitesimal. So this data provide, provides extremely strong evidence against that null hypothesis. It would be safe to conclude that the true slope in the larger population is not zero. We could make similar statements about the, um, about the intercept coefficient, the null hypothesis being, is the intercept in the larger population actually zero? That's a more complicated and potentially less useful um, thing to look at. I won't go into any of that right now. The final thing that I want to show is just a rough and ready way of getting a residual plot. And we can do that here with plot parenthesis model. So remember, model is this thing I just built from that linear model command. Now, if I just hit return right now, I'll get a sequence of four diagnostic plots. I don't need all of that at this level. So I'm just going to get the first one with comma one. I'm going to resize my uh, window a little bit. This is going to open up in the lower right. I want to make sure that I have uh, enough room for it actually to be shown. Uh, there we go. And return. There we go. I'll zoom in on that. Okay, so for each, ele for each observation in our data set, we have a residual. The difference between the value we observed and the value that was predicted by this linear model. A residual plot is plotting those residuals. The residuals go on the y-axis. The fitted values go on the x-axis. All you really need to know at this level about a residual plot is that if the linear model was appropriate, if it's a reasonable model for your data, then this should look like a cloud with no particular patterns. That red um, wavy curve down the middle should be more or less a flat line at the level of y equals zero. It won't be perfectly so. Real world data is noisy and never exactly linear, um, but you would hope to see this with, um, with no major shape to it, no major parabola or anything else. If your data doesn't look just like sort of a random cloud like this, if it departs from that um, in a noticeable way, then maybe the linear model isn't the thing to, for you and something a little bit more sophisticated might be needed. 